Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 86. Um, hey, I'll, first of all, I want to apologize for last night. So, again, like I mentioned, I'm trying to be able to do these podcasts under any circumstances. That way, I can keep them consistent. I, I really want to... Um, I'm not... I don't have a goal. I'm not trying to get 100 or 200. 100, I'll celebrate. Um, 365 when we do the whole year, I'll probably celebrate again. I just want to keep them going. I want this to actually become a part of my life. I think it's very important that I document some of this stuff. I know some of the stuff right now um, is just very monotonous. It, it might not be, might be actually kind of boring. I, I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, but trust me, by the time I'm done with the night, I basically cleared out my head. So whatever. It is that um, I'm talking to you guys about it's stuff that's been in my head. So I go to bed with really nothing missing. So it's a wonderful thing for me personally, and I'm hoping that somehow, some way, it there's something in it for you guys. And maybe as I continue on, maybe as I continue, I'll find that, I'll figure that out, and then maybe I can focus on that a little bit more. You know, I I don't know. So. Now, once we start picking up, God willing, this thing ends, man, and we're all okay. And, you know, um, so God willing, when it's it's over and life gets back to normal, um, these podcasts will be a bit more interesting. And I think you guys will enjoy them a lot more. Uh, I think they'll be informative. They'll be educational. They might be entertaining. Um, I'll be able to, you know, fill you in on some of the new projects. You know, you guys will hear about stuff that I'm working on before anybody else, you know? I wanna be more open, I wanna be more transparent. I really wanna talk to people. Um, Everybody more or less is in the same boat as I am as far as, you know, our ages and what we've we've, uh, accomplished in life and what our goals were and our dreams and where where we are now with those things. And, um, you know, I'd like to hear more from you guys as far as what that is and and you know there has to be something deep inside that's probably you know irking you as it as it does me um i fortunately um now have an outlet with this now i have an outlet also with my videos and stuff like that that's my creative and my writing my books my that creative expression uh that i just love 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 i mean oh my god um and uh you know, and then with the podcast, it t- kind of takes me on a, a, there's a different track. It's almost like a, you know, like I'm running all these different trains. I have the videos, the the, the entertaining ones. We have the vlogs that I have to kick back in, uh, get those going again. Um, the podcasts, um, my writing, these are all different trains. These are all different tracks. These are all different ways that I'm able to express myself and By expressing myself, I'm hoping that there's something in it that you can find. Because sometimes people cannot express themselves. They don't know how. They hold it in. I know. I I forced myself into this. I really did. I I mean, this was something that I you could never have told me that I would do anything like this. You could never have told me that I would do videos or do vlogs. You could never have told me this back in the days, you know? Listen, I'm going to tell you how, how crazy this was, all right? Now, in the 90s, when all we had was message boards. That's all we had. Um, a lot of people, I had my own message board. I had it. On the Style and Free site, <clears throat> any of you guys who are long-time friends and fans of, of mine and my work, um, remember this. Um, a lot of people would post their pictures of them and their family or on there. They called it an avatar back then. Now it's a profile picture. But the avatar would be a photo of them. 
I wouldn't do that. I would always do like the La logo. Um, and uh, I would never put a photo of myself. I would put maybe the best that I would do would be the cartoon. I have a cartoon version of it. Now, for years I did this, okay? I had this funny thing about people knowing who I was, being able to spot me, but I can't spot them. I had an issue with that, okay? Um, I don't know if I still do. Never really thought about it until like right now, okay? And, and check this out, all right? So <clears throat> I remember Angel. Now, you know, I, no matter where I walk with my wife, people know who she is, okay? Not much here in, in North Carolina like it used to be. Um, well, now there is because we run into people we know. But like when we were in New York, I mean, pretty much there's really not too many places she would go to and people would spot her. And even if they didn't say anything, they would stare. So, and usually at that point, I, I knew at that point that they knew who she was. So, and then if they came up um, and they talked to her, a lot of times uh, they just wanna say hi, or they wanna make sure it's her, you know? And um, that was really, that was a proud moment for me too. Um, I, I spent a lot of time with her like that and with Ernest, who, you know, by the way, today is his birthday, Ernest Thomas Raj from What's Happening. Um, he was another celebrity that I spent a lot of time with, and he's even more recognizable than Angel. Like, no matter where we went, um, people spotted him, and they recognized him, and he was always very gracious, and he would stop and just talk to people to the point that him and I had to create uh, um, a, like a little signal, and the signal was he would scratch his ear, like rub the, the lobe of his ear, and that meant for me to step in and say, hey man, it's time to go, and it, it wasn't to be rude, um, because he would, he would talk to these people, and it didn't matter who they were, and he would get into it. But after a while, he would catch himself and he knew we had some place to go. Like we had a meeting or we had, and we had to get out. He didn't want to be the one, listen, I got to go. I'm sorry. He would need me to do that. So he would scratch his lobe and that was the signal like to say, okay, he, he's, ready, he's ready to go. It was funny because I haven't thought about this in a while. Um, and it, it was just, it was just cool. He was always gracious like that, you know, but, um, uh, Hey, you, you know, I got, let me cut off. Let me cut off for a second. I need, I need to throw this in. Okay, there was one time that I was in the city with him, right? And we were walking down Eighth Avenue, we were like in the fifties, like Fifty Third Street or something. And there was a homeless couple laying on cardboard, by you know, by the, one of the buildings. And as we were walking, okay, he was talking to me, and his people used to turn because they recognized his voice. That's what's so crazy. Like, people didn't know who he was when they heard his voice, but they recognized it. They would turn, and then it would all, it would all come together. And I remember walking, and there was um, this homeless man that was laying on the floor on the ground with his wife, okay? I remember it was a summer day. And, and we're walking down, and there was pretty much nobody else on that block. I forgot what street we were on, but like that area, like 8th Avenue or whatever. And he hears us talking. He hears Ernest. And he sits up on his cardboard. And I could see, I knew right away, I, I was so used to it that he recognized him. And when he recognized him, he wakes his wife up, honey, honey, wake up, wake up, look, look. And she wakes up and she looks and her eyes open up. And he goes, Raj. And Ernest stops and we stop. And I, I never had an issue stopping with him because I understood his mentality. I understood things about him because we spent so much time together and how gracious and how appreciative he was of everything that he had. That he, um, people were very important to him. He loved, he loved people. He still does. He loves people. Okay? And he spoke to this couple as if they were you know, another uh, another celebrity couple, you know, walking down, you know, Madison Avenue or something, you know what I'm saying? He, like, there was, there were, there was never any kind of distinct, distinct, what, what you call it, distinction for him between a couple who was homeless and a couple who were well off. He treated them exactly the same. And I personally learned a lot from that, okay? Um, 
I was young. I was in my 20s. So I can understand that. I would probably, yeah, yeah, okay. All right, cool. Nice to meet you. Bye-bye. You know, yeah, no, no, don't don't touch my hand. Let, I, I'll tell you, God bless you. I'll pray for you. Here, here's a couple dollars. Not earnest, man. Uh-uh. And he would stand there or he would squat down. And he would just talk to these people. And he would ask them about themselves. And you would learn that these people, and it's, I know it sounds strange coming from me now, but you got to realize my mentality back then. These were people that had regular lives. They had normal, everyday lives, just like everyone else. And I remember after we were gone, we had to leave. You had to do pull the tongue on the ear because we had to go. We really did. And when we were walking, I was silent for a while. And he asked me, he goes, you okay? I'm like, yeah. He goes, he goes, what's up? I said, man, you know, I'm thinking, I'm saying, these people know you because at one time in their life, they were indoors and they watched you on a television set. And now here they are laying on cardboard in Manhattan. You know, and they were at that time, I think they might have even been older than him at that time. You know, so, you know, at this point, they're old if 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 they're still around, God willing. But um, it was just a way those were, those were the weird little strange observations I used to pick up on that used to touch me. And they used to make me think and used to make me appreciate. And, and it's still it's still. <laughs> Like, if, when I see stuff like that, it just, you know, and it's not about, oh, let me dig in my pocket. Let me bring them in my house. Let me give them this money. It's beyond that because some of these people don't even want that. You give them a few dollars, they're happy. They're not, they're not trying to go nowhere. This, that's just their life, some of them. And, and plus, I'm not trying to get everybody up in my house. So that's not where I'm going with this. What I'm going with is the fact that we don't dream. They've never in their lives ever dreamt of doing that that was not their dream and when they met I guarantee you they didn't meet in, in the street like that I guarantee you he was probably had a good job she probably had a good job they probably met they fell in love they went on dates they went on trips they probably had cars a home maybe apartment they you know they had a whole life and now what can possibly affect you that's severe that not just you but both you and your wife end up like that like what what could have you know what could have happened you know with that so but anyway uh back to what i was talking about i was talking about you know being recognized and that's how i got there sorry guys <laughs> you know how i do <laughs> you should be used to me by now um but i remember when it started, you know, Angel used to tell me, oh, you need, people need to see who, what you look like. You know, it's cool that people know who, what you look like. Because everybody know me. Everybody knew my name. I have a very unique name. So everybody knew my name in the freestyle. Fans, artists, producers, promoters, they all knew my name, okay? But they had no idea what the hell I looked like. So when I would meet an artist or I would meet someone, and I'd say, hey, what's up? Hey, well, how you doing? Hey, Latif. Oh, shit, you're Latif? Oh, yo, what up, man? Yo. And, and that's how it would be. And Angel got to a point, she noticed that. And she told me, you got to use your picture. People need to know what you look like because you're meeting these people. And then it still didn't dawn on me. I don't know if it was part pride or part being just an ass or being stubborn or just trying to be cute. I don't know. But I remember this ha sort of happening a lot. But I remember one time in particular, we did a show somewhere. I forgot where. Might have been... I, I'm gonna say Chicago, because I remember it was like a theater, and the only place we really did theaters, like beautiful theaters, was like Chicago, or we would do like Connecticut, um, like places like that, New York, but I, 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 I think it was uh, Chicago. I remember we did the show, right? And then we came out through the side door and we had to go up these steps. Now, the in, where the steps were, were in the lobby of the theater, so the lobby theater, the, the lobby was packed. With, with, you know, fans, you know, people that were, I think they were, I forgot we were leaving or we were just getting there. So we have to come out and we have to go upstairs. 
and I heard somebody, and this, this happened several times, not that day, but this day, it, it, I, it, it kind of messed with me a little bit because when I was going up the stairs, I heard someone clearly say, is that him? That, I didn't, it didn't dawn because I didn't think they were talking about me. As a matter of fact, it didn't even register until I finally heard them call my name. Someone said, Latif. And when I turned around, I stopped in the steps and nobody said anything. Nobody said anything. So I turned back around and I went upstairs. Now, the only reason why the first part of it registered where I said, where they said, um, is that him? You know, I don't know. You know, is that him? You know, something like that is only because they called my name. And when they did that, it kept messing with me. And I remember I had to come back down. And I was kind of hoping whoever it was that called me would come up to me because it messed with me. I know it's stupid, but it messed with me. And, I'm, you know, think about it. I'm up on the steps. I'm coming out. I see 300 people in just a lobby, maybe more. And because the, the, the theater, I think, was like, I don't know. Theater might hold like 800 people. So there was a lot of people in the theater. There was still people in the lobby area. So it had to be about 300 people. So you're talking about all these people. And this is freestyle, these are freestyle fans. So even though one called my name, I'm sure a lot of them knew who I was. And it bothered me. And I remember Angel making a comment again. She goes, you see? She goes, you know, people don't know it's you. She goes, you should, you know, you need to put your pitch out there more often. And I remember when I started doing that. And I, I forgot where I started, maybe with MySpace or whatever, and then into Facebook and so on. Um, I started using... Uh, my picture more often um, to uh, and, and you know and now it's gotten to a point where you know uh, yeah people people know me they recognize me uh, and it's cool it's cool and it's a lot more it's still a little kind of creepy um, because I'm a man and, and let me let me let me say this once sometimes people come up to me and they're like let's see What's up? They give me the, they tell me the name and they hug me and I'm like, I, you know, and while I'm hugging them, I'm trying to remember who the hell they are. I don't remember. And, and I, because, and it's not because they weren't important. No, these people are very important to me, but sometimes they, they don't have a picture on their social media profile or it's an old picture. I don't recognize them or it's just like a freaking picture of their eyes and, and I'm like, man, who is this person? And they say, they'll say the name. Now the name rings a bell, but I can't put two and two together because it'll be like some weird name, like, you know, you know, Mary, you know, Mary from the Bronx, you know, and I'm like, man, so I don't remember. And then, you know, when I'm with Angel, we might be at the airport or something, and she'll go through her phone and or my phone and she'll show me, hey, look, you see your friends. And when she, as soon as I see the name, and I see the avatar the, or the, the profile picture, bing, it rings a bell. And at that point, I'm like, oh my God, these, I communicate with this person all the time. Like, this is my people. And I feel like crap, man, because of the way I, you know, I didn't mean to, I wasn't cold, but I wasn't, I was a little phony because I wasn't sure who they were. And they were, they were acting like they knew me forever. And that made it even worse for me. If they were just like, you know, hey, hey, lad, what's up, man? Nice to meet you, Bob. Or, you know, hey, what's up? You know, or tell me something. But they swear that I'm going to. And it's not that I don't remember them because they're not important. It's that I don't see your picture. <laughs> I don't know what you look like, you know? So it, it kind of throws me off. And uh, so anybody who I've done that to, please forgive me. Um, a lot of times when that happens, though, um, <clears throat> Usually at that point, I usually would never forget them again. I'll always remember who they are from that point. The only other way is if if there was something that they did or something that they said or something that, you know, something that will always remind me of them. You know, like, you know, <clears throat> we had a, a, a girl who gave Angel a cowboy hat one time. I always remember her for that. You know, um, I have people who have, you know, Taking pictures or taking pictures with us, or with me in particular. Remember, Angel's, a, you know, she's a celebrity. She takes billions of pictures. Me, I'm lucky if I get a few pictures. If people want to take my picture with me, hey, I feel freaking blessed. But I, I like when they take the picture and they post it. 
So that way it clicks, because I don't want to forget people. I don't, I appreciate people. I don't want to forget them, you know? So, but, um, yeah, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. It was just um, just stuff that's been on my uh, on my mind, you know. Um, but uh, I don't know where I was going with that, <laughs> like always. <laughs> but uh, it was interesting. I think the, the Ernest Thomas story is pretty interesting because I haven't thought about that story uh, in years. Yeah, and, and again, today's his birthday. If, if you guys... Uh, a lot of you guys who are actually listening have already wished him happy birthday. I've seen it on the post, on my post. So, uh, he's a good brother. Real good brother. So, but anyway, guys, um, that's it for tonight. Um, I'm glad I didn't have to talk about the coronavirus tonight. I didn't want to. I really didn't want to. We all know what's going on. Maybe tomorrow I'll talk about it. You know, I'll talk about when I don't have something else to talk about. But if I could bring something else out... Um, then I'd rather do that. You know, I'm standing outside just so you know, it's a cool night. I didn't bring Coco with me. Uh, freaking dog started barking yesterday, threw me off. <laughs> so she's stuck in the house now, but uh, I'm out here. Uh, it's a nice night. A little cooler than usual, but hey, still perfect for me. I can sleep out here. So. But anyway, guys, uh, once again, hey, thanks for liking all the TikToks, man. I really appreciate that. Um, if you guys have not picked up a copy of Freestyle for Life, the Kindle version. Please pick it up between today and tomorrow because it's tomorrow's the last day. It comes off the, the free market. Um, and I don't know when I could do that again. So please try to grab a copy. It's free. There's no strings attached. I'm not asking you to uh, promote it or give me a review or anything. Just go get the book, have it, read it. Um, if you have a Android or if you have an iPhone, just go into the the Apple Store, go to the Apple Store, go into um, uh, Play Store and uh, download the free Kindle app so that way you can read the books, man. And, and not only those books, you can read all kinds of books. They also have newspapers. They have um, a lot of free books. They have poems. I mean, Amazon is incredible, man. You know, uh, they put all the libraries and, and well, most of the libraries out of business and uh, the bookstores are done because of Amazon. Hey, I'm all for technology, man. <laughs> Capitalism. Anyway, I right, people. I appreciate having have a, a nice night, man. Please stay safe. Stay in the house. All right. Um, keep, you know, watch some kids. Wash the hands. Let's pray that none of us catch this, man. It's scary. I'm terrified. I'm looking on Facebook, seeing all these people getting sick and dying, and I'm terrified, man. I'm terrified. I'm terrified for my kids, for your kids, for your friends and family. Man, this just needs to stop, like, now, you know? So, all right, people, have a good night. God bless, and until tomorrow, good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.